here we are pulling up into the mall where I'm going to have to go take a picture of Santa Claus like an asshole. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Alright, Santa's about to get a visit from the jet flying. <laughs> you see him <laughs> He's stealing, wheeling, dealing. Son of a gun. Air vision. Here we go. The BWF Wrestling Podcast. With your host and the leader of the BWF Nation, the King, Susan Little Babu, the undisputed BWF champion, Aaron Pitt Hello, BWF Nation. Welcome to the final edition of the BWF Wrestling Podcast. For 2023, I am your host, The Fish, and as you can see, not only am I the reigning and defending BWF champion, but I am now the newly crowned BWF TNT champion. I'm a double champ. Holy shit. My Christmas was fantastic. Condon, how was your Christmas, buddy? I was sick for most of it, and now I'm going to be sick again. I um, was not aware that there was a BWF TNT championship belt, but it looks like I got uh, another mission coming up in the new year to uh, get another title belt off you. We are one step closer to taking away all your dreams. We are and, and with and with that in mind, please, Aaron, let me get through some business here. Please like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications for the BWF wrestling podcast go to bwfpodcast.com to see the archives and see all of aaron's nudie pictures and of course go down to kofi.com slash bwf podcast buy us a kofi won't you please um we have been racking up uh, dollar after dollar from the bwf nation this year so if you want to be part of it you want to you want to be a part of the nation you you better uh you better start uh being loose with those uh pocketbooks you know what i'm saying absolutely every bit counts you know like so we, we do punishments all the time and punishments championships everything here costs money so uh, oh so you bought that did it is that what happened you didn't oh, beat no, a no, 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 no 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 the, the bwf bought it i i did not buy it. the bwf bought it um i have i i won this championship fair and square over over christmas um but yeah the any dollar that you can contribute to the bwf fund will help go towards stuff like this for yeah your- please yeah that's a what a great pitch for our fans at home <laughs> your uh, your money will go towards stroking this man's ego so i told you before that i was not feeling uh very good over the holidays and right before i came on here i was checking my blood sugars accidentally pricked my uh finger with the uh with the needle there uh-oh yeah i figured you'd react like that and you know i've been thinking about it i think that my new year's resolution for 2024 is that i'm going to insist that people are more sympathetic towards me i have been fighting my whole life to make sure that people didn't pity me and now when bad (laughs) things happen i don't get the reaction i deserve so let it be known aaron that this uh bullshit will not stand in 2024 I'm sorry, buddy. Is your finger okay? Is it? Is I don't. It I don't. Want, uh, look, I don't want to talk about it. Okay, no. it's too late. It's too late. You're on notice, Aaron. It is 2024. By the time this podcast comes up, 
You could say we are recording this at the last, it's our last recorded podcast of 2023 and our first release of 2024. And yeah. so we are going to do um, something that a lot of podcasts do, which is uh, talk about our favorite things that happened in wrestling in 2023. And we're going to cap it all off with um, something I personally never thought was ever going to happen. Aaron, what is the uh, the main event this week? The main event this week, my friend, finally, is Kevin Sullivan. We got him on the show. We have an interview with him along with Andrew Anderson. Uh, it's going to be fantastic stick around for it because it's been everything that we've been hyping and so much more it finally happened we got him buddy we got him and i appreciate you including me in this victory but as anybody that knows has been watching since october since the shenanigans began i didn't think this was going to happen i was on record many times saying that i thought that you were looked upon as some mark and some guy just grifted you and made you look like a fool in public but i was wrong didn't happen this time and so aaron <laughs> congratulations buddy i mean what a way to end off the year it was close right. was it, it going to be another year where aaron comes out looking like a fool no down to the wire aaron does not come out looking like a fool this year i got some music for it As I said, my friend, you just got to have some faith in humanity. Everything that's, works. Maybe that's something that I'll change. But I got to get some sympathy and pity from people first before I start believing in humanity. But the roads are there. I'm watching from afar as you are enjoying your best life. Aaron, we're not doing news this week. Aaron, we're not doing viewer mail this week. Aaron, we're not doing punishments this week. We will be doing some trivia uh, from a pre-record that we will uh, slot in here as the uh, path towards disaster continues into the new year. But the main focus, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, the main focus of this episode is our look back. Uh, do you want to get going with that? Yeah, sure. We're going to take a look back at 2023, the best and the worst. Uh, we're going to throw our opinions out there and have a, a nice discussion. Ah, fuck. Let's start over again. Sorry. No. Oh, my God. Did, anytime you bail like that, that's another 10, 15 minutes of me going through the episode. All right. Here. <laughs> Here's right. <laughs> we're gonna go to the we're gonna put the news uh thing on with the music because people love that music <laughs> and yes you're right aaron i did say that we're not doing news this week but we could just call this the news segment because it's uh, you know what? we should say something right quick in this news segment though because uh some breaking news came out last night that we should mention um kevin dunn is leaving the wwe after 30 uh, years yes that's big that's huge it is yeah um i think a lot of people are happy to see him go um he last i heard he, it was him that decided he wanted to leave um what i've read was that he was not going to be going along with any of the changes that Endeavor wanted to make and so he took his ball and went home i think we'll be all the better for it yes no more camera shaking shit no more fucking just the same stuff that we've seen for the past 30 years we can literally close our eyes watch her eye we can know when the commercial break is happening during like a wrestling match and stuff like that it's so predictable it's so laid out um it's just been the same shit for the said for the past 25 30 years so it's going to be really good to get a fresh paint of uh, a fresh set of eyes on the product to maybe revamp it i don't know the way it's presented uh some new camera camera angles i don't know who knows but i think it's only going to be for the good 
Yeah, it seems to me that right around Ruthless Aggression era is when they stopped evolving their look. Maybe a little bit after that, um, whenever I would see the product, it, it you know, probably when they went HD, I guess, uh, they um, they sort of just have not really evolved. And now with uh, Triple H being there for a year, uh, presumably will be there for a while. A new look for the WWF, uh, WWE will be uh, cool. Like, it'll be nice to see it evolve. And uh, as was the case with uh, Vince, I mean, Kevin Dunn has been doing this for so long that it is, um, uh, I mean, it's not that much of a surprise to see that he was not willing to evolve. Um, so, anyways, kudos f- to him, anyways, for getting out of the way. So, that's uh, happening as of uh, midnight tonight. That's nuts. Or just like that. God yeah, seal it. Gone. Put the door kicking the ass on the way out, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, and there was a lot of people that were saying that his views on the women's wrestling uh was also still kind of antiquated. I d I don't know. I mean women's wrestling in terms of presentation is uh, uh good. Um but uh, even the promotional videos like um this past year of us being able to go back and look at stuff uh of old like they really had just sort of stuck uh in their ways so it's exciting to see yeah and we are right now triple h has an amazing opportunity ahead of them uh we're heading into wrestlemania 40 you know obviously the biggest wrestlemania of all time um he's got all kinds of new talent coming in he's got cm punk you know he's got cody rhodes uh the rumors of the rock you know all all kinds of things going on he has a great opportunity now with the royal rumble to really put his touch on things um and to really have a nice presentation a nice new clean sleek look to to the product heading into mania and my friend i think it's going to be an exciting time for wrestling going forward i really can't wait it always is every year you hear people say i didn't have this on my bingo card for 2023 or 2022 and every year that's one of the fun things about following wrestling even if you're not following the product is uh is every year there's massive changes that uh recontextualize uh where everything is going and what's important and stuff so i'm sure that 2024 will be no different and later we We'll talk a little bit about uh, where we think things are going. But for now, let's talk about the previous year. And so we uh, are, you know, I mean, a lot of the times you sort of like gum up an entire show, just filling it with uh, with uh, awards and mentions and stuff. We have kind of kept it down to a couple of best ofs and a couple of worst ofs each. And um, I think that maybe we have covered everything, but let's see. Uh, do you remember your picks? Um, I do. I do. I think I do anyway. Um, okay. but I, I do have a, a, a list here of best of matches that I um, I rethought because I, I gave you one answer. And then I was thinking about it. It's like, oh, I don't know if that's the one I want to give or not. So I have a bunch of matches here that I thought were really good over 2023 and um, I'll pick one from here, but we'll get there. Okay. Well, let's start off with the best match. Um, you have a bunch. Um, mine is, we'll go with mine. Um, and then uh, I can talk about what you submitted and see what else you got uh, going on. My pick for best match of the year is, do I got a drum roll? Drum I got a drum roll. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do it for everyone. And Swerve Strickland at full gear this year. Cowboy Adam Page and Swerve Strickland at full gear. Their um, whatever cowboy no holds barred match. Um, happened in November was one of the mat, one of the pay-per-views that I was going to go see, uh, this year. And let me tell you, after that match happened, and that's the only match that I've watched, uh, f- I think from that card. Um, uh, but I, uh, after watching, uh, that match, I thought maybe I had made a mistake by waiting to go to the survivor series, 
and even after the Survivor Series, and uh, you know, we've talked at length about uh, that. Um, it's still out of the both of the pay per views was the best match. It was controversial, and I think it made a star, which is a big thing in any good match. Uh, in my eyes, it made uh, Swerve Strickland. I mean, even up until a couple of months ago, uh, I think I was still calling him by his NXT name. Like Swerve Strickland didn't make, didn't really go with me. Um, but that's all changed now, and I, uh, uh, I'm a big fan. I'm, um, he might be, especially now with the changes in AEW, he might be my favorite act going in AEW. Aaron, what about yourself? That is one of the matches that made my list. And honestly, you said the exact same things I was going to say. Um, the fact that it made, I, you know, I know Hangman's been an AEW champion and he's been in big profile matches with CM Punk and all that stuff. But I think this match also, it not made him, but it took him to another level for sure. And it definitely made Swerve 100%. Um, when, when a match can do that, when it can elevate and make someone, and have be a match that people talk about, you know, down the road. Um, it's 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 great. It's great for the business, and it's fun for us to watch. Um, for sure. Fun. And just one thing now that you bring it up, like another thing that was great about that match before I even watched it, uh, the big moment I think was the blood drinking part, right? Yeah. And I was like, I mean, that was something I'd never seen before. It was crazy. And I was so surprised that that happens in like the first 10 minutes. That's in the first part of the match, right? That's not the payoff at all. And so no, that was really cool. the first like two or three minutes of the match. Yeah, yeah right. And I, I don't know if maybe they should have waited until the very end. So they would get, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if it would have been more effective towards the end or not. I have no idea. But he definitely gave himself, Hangman Page, a Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania blood tripper down moment kind of thing. You know, he's he's etched himself now forever with him spitting at the blood like Triple H. That's that's in wrestling lore now forever. And we're never going to forget that. So I picked one of yours. Um, do you want me to say what you sent in to me or uh, what do you want to do? Um, I originally sent in Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, sorry, versus Zack Saber Jr. Yeah, great match. What but was that? Was, what card was that on? I do believe that was Full Gear as well. No, 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 that was the one in Seattle, uh, the Forbidden Door. Forbidden Door. No, no, it wasn't Forbidden Door. It was. Oh. Uh, it was after Forbidden Door, but it, oh, it, right. it was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that. Um, Oh shit! It was that, like the that. best or something, or like, uh, or like fa that's fantasy true. match or something, or like it was the fucking New Japan fucking uh, yeah. It was uh, ah, it's the one that had uh, the first Swerve Scott Adam Page match too, right? Oh, maybe because because uh, 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 Swerve is from uh, is from Seattle or from Washington that area. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, it's like Wrestle sorry. Dream. That's what it was. Wrestle Dream. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, it was Wrestle yeah. Dream. So I love that match, but um, Zack Saber Jr. selling in it kind of eked me off a tiny bit, which is why I wouldn't give that a five star match. I give it four, a four and a half personally. But uh, on my list, I have Mike Bailey versus Will Ospreay from Impact. Yes. Yeah. I have yeah. Rhea versus Charlotte from WrestleMania. Oh yeah. Uh, Swerve versus Hangman, Osprey versus Omega Two, uh, the aforementioned Brian Danielson versus Zack Saber, and then Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage from last night. Which oh I yeah, that made the list. Hey, eh? loved. I loved that match. Like, and, and I don't know if it's just because it's fresh and it's the newest thing on my list or not, but I'm actually going to give that my uh, match of the year. Nice, yeah, um, yeah. That was good. I, I think also like um that was it, it came i think it was came at a time when it was shaping up to be the worst aew pay-per-view of all time before they really came was, out and, uh, me and susan were, my wife we were watching it and we we're like this is boring as fuck and i was so excited for this pay-per-view last night yeah. um but you know what that when edge and christian or copeland and christian came out and their match saved the show uh, it it woke the crowd up it got us on the go even with the botched flaming table spot i thought which was awesome by the yeah. way <laughs> yeah. even, i thought it was more, i thought it was better that it was botched i i, I, I yeah I, 
Uh, I agree, actually, and I I always dislike that uh, the Foley edge spot because the the fire always goes out when people crash through it, as opposed to just sliding off of it and it not breaking. So it looks way better. And the sell job after was just <laughs> the cherry on top for that. But yeah, no, I I thought last night's match had the a correct amount of violence. The crowd was into it. Uh, everything made sense between the tables, the ladders, and the chairs. Uh, the finish where Edge actually won, and then Christian actually gets the title back with the whole kill switch uh, contract thing. That was great storytelling. I fucking loved it, man. Ten out of ten. Match of the year for, for me by far. There you go. Good stuff. All right. That's an interesting one and uh, and uh, much needed, uh, I think, uh, for AEW. So good for them. Just reusing stuff all over the place for this. Let's jump to worst match of the year now. Um, you had two that you submitted to me. Um do you want to i don't know if you've changed that but uh, maybe you can uh, start us off with worst worst match of the year um i have two for worst match as we said the first one is at the royal rumble unfortunately i, I don't like putting this on my list but the match was fucking shit. it was <laughs> la Knight versus bray Wyatt. my <laughs> god that- aaron there's are you do you have no heart like could you not Surely there was a worse match this year than the guy that passed away. There's only one match that was worse. Now, granted, audience, I don't watch the product. We don't watch the product. We don't watch Monday Night Raw on a weekly basis. I think we've watched maybe two Raws the whole year. Um, So, you know, that being said, uh, the worst match that I've seen this year was Jey Uso versus Roman Reigns at the SummerSlam yeah that was yeah that was on my list too um like i think probably cast a shadow over the entire SummerSlam card really it was so i mean even going into it it was not it was not worth a SummerSlam main event no and it killed the whole bloodline thing i mean like they were yeah. even i know that we've been bitching at the bloodline thing this whole entire 2023 calendar year but going into the summer slam they had a lot of momentum coming off the civil blood war or civil blood fucking whatever or civil war yeah uh over money in the bank where jay pin roman i mean people were reacting it was hot people wanted jay to win that match uh, going into that match the jay was over the crowd was into it the crowd loved him and then as soon as the bell rang um it was just the beginning of the end of, of the whole storyline it's true and like you said we were talking about it before that uh, we thought that it was done but people were really began to get vocal about being sick of roman's matches uh falling into that same kind of pattern of uh him down and out somebody comes interferes he wins one two three um and you saw that happening like people were uh over it uh people yeah it jumped the shark that storyline jumped the shark officially at that and i'm not even really sure where it is right now like uh i know jay is uh like i thought that jimmy was kicked out of the bloodline but now he's still roman's lackey and uh solo doesn't even feel like that big of a deal anymore even though they gave him that win like uh, against cena like it, it really lost a lot of momentum yeah it just deflated anything they had um and you know what solo man he woke up, he's gonna be stuck in no man's land i think from here until mania he's probably one of the very few unfortunate souls right now because what what's he going to do at the rumble he's not going to get the longest time in the rumble probably he's not going to win the rumble that's for damn well sure he's not going to be in any world title matches leading to wrestlemania it's probably going to be about jay and uh jimmy and roman and either cody or the rock so who the fuck is solo going to be like he's stuck out no man's land just like his thumb just like his small spike thumb nice so- good good i like that um yeah you're right i mean i i never really thought about it that far ahead which just kind of goes to show how uh irrelevant he is in this thing um uh and and yeah i mean even roman is sort of like at this point people are just waiting for him to get to mania like everybody knows he's not going to lose it before mania and then everybody is assuming that he's just going to lose it to cody so I don't know what they can do to really um, spice it up a bit, but um, I think um, 
I was thinking last night, like it, it, it would, what would make sense is he's always, uh, Roman has been, always been about the family, but if he became so maniacal that Rikishi came out and said, like, you don't represent, like, they all have to come out and say, you don't represent us anymore. You have gone like way too far. Um, that's the, and then he loses it, but, uh, but and then the other thing too is that he really should probably lose it to the rock like that rock match i wish had happened last year um and then cody this year late yeah too late um but uh, a good shout and yeah uh, much like yours i think yours is probably uh, indicative of one of the major things that is wrong with uh, wwe right now and my pick is one of the things that is uh wrong <laughs> with aew and i want to say i had this picked like weeks ago uh and i don't even really want to get into whatever the news is now but my pick was for worst match of the year is adam cole versus chris jericho at double or nothing adam cole and jericho or had a match double or nothing i don't even remember that match and it was a stadium stampede no holes barred sabu was in on it but it was the moment like the match itself is like it wasn't bad it wasn't a botch fest or anything like that but it it's indicative of one of the major problems AEW has, which is Chris Jericho coming on to a hot wrestler. Um, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Coming in, <laughs> getting no. involved with, uh, with, with somebody who's like starting to gain popularity and just taking them down, man, and just tying them up. You know, um, he was saying a couple of weeks ago that he wanted to start working with uh, Swerve Strickland and like, everybody was just like roll their eyes like keep him away from it yeah i mean he took away a great match from us uh, at all in with will osprey i mean granted the match was okay but when it comes to will osprey we want five star matches we want us to go holy fucking shit you know and be blown away not be dogged down by fucking whatever jericho is doing these days he looks like mickey rourke had sex with axel rose and out came chris jericho nice yeah that's uh i mean that's not even really an insult that's just kind of accurate really accurate. yeah and it's too bad because he does need to just go away for a bit uh maybe things are happening now to sort of help that along uh because jericho is still one of my uh favorite guys uh, as a jericho holic in wcw he was a huge deal uh in aew getting uh some steam at its very onset and i'm not really like with other sort of fans of just you know hating him um but he, you know he needs to go away to reinvent himself come back uh he can't do it on camera and you know i mean uh, same with kind of kenny omega going out too it's like obviously awful that uh, kenny's out for who knows how long but i mean the timing really couldn't be better for kenny in terms of like what he was doing storyline wise um unfortunately yeah, he can come, he can come back revamped uh get a new a new fresh coat of paint on and go from there well but, and uh, just away from that golden jets storyline that was just completely bad and um not what aew needs like aew needs kenny omega to be like the champ pretty much uh more so now than ever adam cole is still not good um mjf has gone for a bit now like you know um i'm happy that joe is champ obviously i love Smo joe but yeah, they you, you have joe but how long can he go and then we got mox he's he's always good but i mean outside of that i'm not interested in seeing orange cassidy as champion no Derek Allen, he's going to be toast in a couple of years i mean i like the man but i like the wrestler but he's going to be toast um but you know while we're talking about jericho i have a really quick jericho story because i don't know when we're ever going to be able to talk about it ever again but all right <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told you this, but it's when I met Chris Jericho. Have I ever told you the story about when I met Chris Jericho? I don't think so. Uh, he, You got him to sign that uh, flag behind you, right? There's a photo of it that's in the intro. Yes. So yeah. this flag here, there's over 40 autographs on this flag. Chris Jericho is one of them. Yeah. We're in Pittsburgh. It's the Royal Rumble 2014 weekend. Uh, he's not even on the show or on the roster at this point. He's just there for an autograph signing. So is Seamus. Uh, some auto show. But anyway, um, I'm in lineup. And it's my turn after this guy ahead of me. And the, the guy ahead of me, 
he has a bottle of hand lotion that he wants Jericho to sign. And this, I shit you not, this is this is a true story. And this guy, he's, you know. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah? Oh, wait now. No, no, I thought you were going to say he was mentally delayed. But he's, no, 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 no. He's, you know, he's, you know. He's homosexual. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. He, he plays for for the other side, fans. Right. He sure. goes. Uh, he he goes up to Chris Jericho with his bottle of hand lotion, and he asks him to autograph it. And Jericho just looks at him. He's like, "I don't even want to know." And he just signed it. <laughs> <laughs> and then wow. I go, "Yeah, he's all cranky and he's all pissed off." And I'm like, "Just get my autograph from." Him. He's like, so, "So he's like, where's his flag from?" I said, "Newfoundland." And he's like, "Oh, Newfoundland." He's also Canadian, so he knows where Newfoundland is. Yeah. He was, How do you feel with the trailer park boys making you guys look like idiots? <laughs> that was just, that was his, that was, that's his conversation with me. I'm like, uh, <laughs> accurate, I guess. I don't know. Well, thanks for, I don't know. It's such a weird interaction, but that's my Chris Jericho story. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. I, don't even, I can't even really unpack that. Um, I guess like. <laughs> surprised he didn't have anything in the back pocket about like newfies or something you'd think a uh vet heel like him you know i always wondered that like every time uh you go to uh, a show like a heel comes out and has some like at least minor like like his uh deep cuts on on every location about like you know um like if they go to baltimore they'll talk shit about how washington dc is way better than you like i mean the heels need to be like studying and like making notes on uh on each location and what'll get heat i was at a house show in st john's newfoundland one time and jericho uh a part of the story as well uh was in the ring with trish stratus but these guys are faces at the time and trish stratus called us halifax yes by yes <laughs> And the place just rained down yeah. booze on Jericho. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Awful. They got the hell out of Dodge. Yes, it returns. So this week we are doing trivia uh, that is about Christmas, wrestling trivia about Christmas. We're going to go three for three. Um, last time we did this, we went five for five, and I took a long time to answer. Uh, really, really extended the episode. So we're going to try and do this now. If I lose, I do the deadly hot sauce challenge is my punishment. And yours, well, we'll have to reveal that at a later, later date. But to try and eclipse the public humiliation of the Santa Claus, I don't know, Bish. It's going to be hard. I, 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 hope, I hope you got it this week. That's what I think. <laughs> um as you were the loser last week i think you should go first okay question number one who are the only two former wwe superstars or wwf to portray santa claus in a major motion picture oh uh hulk hogan and goldberg fuck i didn't think you're gonna get goldberg <laughs> i thought you're gonna get to, ah. santa claus come on isn't that what it is i don't even know what fucking movie goldberg is in i know santa with muscles is is hogan but i i don't even know what movie goldberg is in <laughs> no it's a horror a christmas horror movie where he's like um a evil santa claus yeah oh my god <laughs> Wow. All right. I got, uh, I thought we were going to probably have the same uh, questions because there isn't a whole lot to go around, but mine's a variation sort of. Uh, which of these wrestlers have never appeared in a WWF slash WWE segment with Santa Claus? Stone Cold Steve Austin, Brett Hitman Hart, John, you can't see me, Cena, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Well, Stone Cold dressed up, you know, Santa. 
So it's not Stone Cold. That was going to be one of my questions to you, but uh, I changed it last night. Um, oh, lucky me. Right? Yeah. So you, oh my God, John Cena, Hogan, and Brett. You would have to think Brett's been in something with Santa. You would have to think it. You have to think Brett. And you would also have to think Cena because he's been there for so long. But Hogan. Hogan, has he ever? This is a segment on WWE TV, correct? That's right. Yes. So not him playing Santa Claus in a movie. Man. I'm going to have to say Hogan. Final answer. Nice. Um, as you said, Stone Cold Steve Austin, um, Stunner uh, Santa. Brett was in the ring with uh, Santa at the end of his Survivor Series match with Shawn Michaels. And uh, John Cena's had a bunch of... Uh, uh appearances with old santa claus i think he saves or brought santa back to life or something like that uh, uh during the pg era I would, again not watching during that time hulk hogan funny enough played santa in a movie there was never a wwf segment with him and santa claus in the ring together <laughs> question number two go for it when Stone Cold Steve Austin dressed up as Santa Claus for the 2003 edition of Tribute to the Troops, who did he stunner? Was it A, Vince McMahon? Was it B, Eric Bischoff? Or was it C, Jonathan Coachman? Oh, no. <laughs> Those are three equally plausible answers. I don't think it was Vince because I, I know that he he does stunner Vince dressed up as Santa. I don't think it was as tribute at tribute of the troops. Um and honestly, like in doing uh the research for this, I did come across the answer to this, and now I can't think of it. Um I, I mean Man, and then between Eric Bischoff and Jonathan Coachman, it could be either or. Um, he would go on to, f like, I mean, he was feuding with Bischoff through, wait now, though. But he got fired after there's, no, but he was around, so it's not, uh, I was going to say, wouldn't have been Bischoff because of the Survivor Series match, but that was actually in 2004. So a year previous to that, 2003, both of them would have been around. Coachman definite is always good for a stunner. Like he could, it, 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 there's no way of being able to pin down where Jonathan Coachman is at any point in time. But he always could be good for a stunner. Uh, I'm gonna guess Eric Bischoff. Oh. <laughs> That was crazy. Did you see the rain just go on yeah. my screen? That was, Did you do that? No, I, must be because of my thumbs. It is. Oh, too wow. My, wow. Weird. Okay. Crazy. But I'm so glad that you did all that with the with the explanation and going through the hard times on that question. I spent a long time last night thinking of that question, and I was like, "Who can I put in there to fuck him up?" And I was like, yeah. "Coachman." So uh, anyway, you're right on the money. It is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, or sorry, Vince McMahon. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That was the time. Yeah. See, I thought Vince in 2003 was over on SmackDown. Anyways, uh, there's yeah. Good question. Good question. All right, here we are. We're uh, one for one. This is my second question to you. Um, what wrestler played Xanta Claus? He attacked Savio Vega. Um, he 
is a well-known wrestler that would I don't believe ever wrestle under his own or his well-known name in the WWF. Um, I don't have a multiple choice for this off the top of my head. Do you have any inclinations? Hey, I don't need a multiple choice. Oh, good. Okay. Because unfortunately for you, this was my third question. So oh, yeah. wow. So the answer is Balls Mahoney. Third question for me. I'm going to, have to think of one off the top of my head. <laughs> wow. I should have had a backup. I should have had a backup. I question. got one, two, three. I got four questions here. Yeah, I got a backup. Should have had a backup. Yeah. Okay. Deserve that music for somebody who's thinking of an answer to a question. Now we're just using this music. Somebody thinking of a question. We do this. Bishop. I'm this. I'm sorry. What? So we're going to edit this little part. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why don't we just do this? How about I ask you the questions I have? Okay. And if you so what are you at now? You're at you're at two, right? So if yeah. you get one of uh the next two questions right, then we'll say you win. Fair enough. And these aren't easy ones. Okay, in, there have been, okay, there have been, and I don't know if last night there was one, but there have been three Miracle on 34th Street fight matches. Can you name the, can you name three of the six competitors in those matches? Probably not. <laughs> All right, come on now, give it a shot. Miracle of 34th Street match. Oh, my God. Dolph Ziggler. No. Our truth. Big names. All right. We'll move on to the other. We'll move on to another one. <laughs> the answers to that was John Cena. Randy yeah. Orton, Bray Wyatt, Dean Ambrose, Alberto Del Rio. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't watch the product, son. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. But I mean, I, I'm surprised that you didn't come across any 34th Miracle and 34th Street fight matches while uh, researching this. Here we go. So if you get this one right, then you win. And if you don't, then. You got another punishment. Now, I should say, just to make it clear, that you lose this, you get another punishment, you still have to lose another one to lose your belt and for it to be over. So it's just, you know, we still got another two rounds of this. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. In a rare example of WWE not siding with Fox News, in response to Megyn Kelly uh, who is an anchor on Fox News, saying that Santa Claus is always white. WWE had a match on Raw later that week uh, with Mark Henry dressed up as Santa Claus. And he would uh, defeat another white wrestler dressed up as Santa Claus as a way to show Republicans that Santa can be any color a person can be. Who did Santa Claus, Mark Henry Santa Claus, defeat in this match? Was it Jack Swagger, Dolph Ziggler, Damian Sandow? My initial reaction and in gut says Damian Sandow. Mark Henry. Actually, Jack Swagger, though, he's all American Republican guy. Dolph Ziggler, he'll take a, he'll take a pin, he'll job, he'll definitely take, he'll take a job. Yeah. 
Oh my god. I'm gonna go with Sandow. Final answer. Final answer. Final answer. If Aaron gets this right, he stays another week. If not, then I'm doing the hot challenge. Hot sauce challenge is not Damien Sandow was the bad white Santa Claus. Yes. <laughs> Congrats. Oh, thank God. I've been doing parsements for a month straight. Thank God. <laughs> yes, it's been quite the it's been quite the losing streak for you, uh, historic. Uh, we were going kind of neck and neck, and then you just <clears throat> yeah. So uh, there we go on the not next week's show, but the first one, I guess, of the new year. We will uh, we will pick up that punishment and continue the Mortal Kombat themed jaw uh labors six labors <laughs> again it's uh, so simple uh people keep writing me in they say what is it that's going on why is it that the person loses but goes up towards their thing why is it so convoluted it's not convoluted it's so simple the person does not want to rise up should it have been maybe the other direction i don't know we can look at that next year what are you what are you doing bishop well whose side are you on whose side are you on <laughs> bish I'm always on the side of the BW of Nation. Oh my God, you baby face. It's pathetic. So maybe next time we'll turn it upside down. But yes, it, you you rise up and then you achieve the thing that you don't want to have happen. So I, I don't know. I mean, a little change like that um, would make it easier for people. We'll take a look at it. But uh, it's so simple. Oh, God. Well, Anyways. Uh, best pay-per-view of the year. Um, I'll go first this time. My uh, my favorite pay-per-view this year is what we very first, our very first coverage of this uh, historic podcast, and that's WrestleMania. I think WrestleMania this year, both nights uh, were good, had everything that you look for in a show. Um I don't know. I mean, like, there's not much uh, more that I can say about it. Um, oh, you're right. And I mean, especially night one. Um, you know, you had the great Rhea versus Charlotte match. Yeah. Uh, I think on one, you also had Dominic versus Ray. And uh, I fucking yeah. love Dominic Mysterio, man. We'll talk with him in a second, too. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, I agree. WrestleMania was actually really, really good this year. And, you know, the uh, one of, uh, my, I guess, my runner up for best match was at WrestleMania, which was the Gunther, Sheamus, Drew McIntyre match. Uh, neck and neck. But I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about Swerve Strickland. Uh, but Gunther is one of my guys, too. And uh, really happy I got to see him this year. Um, he's like, uh, I, like I, I uh, followed him when he was Volter back in the. It was you know when the Indies there was no no AEW, so there was just like if you Indies, and he was so awesome even when he was chunkier guy, and it's so awesome to see how much he's been able to adapt and thrive uh in the wwf wwe system i don't know why i keep on saying wwf it's, <laughs> it's always, always going to be a wwf to us to us yeah. 40 rules, it's always going to be the fed right it's always going yeah. to be the fed but uh no gunther my very first match i ever saw gunther was against will osprey um over in the uk promotion uk pro or something like that um, yeah red pro uh, yeah there you go yeah. so i've been following him on the indies for a little while as well but yeah gunther is He's soon to be, I think, the next one to break through. Hopefully, it's only a matter of time. He's got to lose the IC Championship. What? What do you would? Okay, let's speak of Gunter. IC Championship. Should he drop it, or should he win another championship and vacate it? I think uh, he should lose it. I think he should lose it because whoever beats him um, 
it's uh, they go over it's a good push and it's like what happened with Ilya Dragunov right like Gunther held that UK NXT championship for ages and Dragunov was the one that beat him and it uh, cemented Dragunov as being like uh, uh, being like legit uh, which I think was a good move and the thing about uh, about uh, Gunther is that he um, like he's not the honky-tonk man right like he's not gonna um, he's not going to kibosh losing to somebody uh, because he's worried about what it'll look like if he looks uh, if he loses on free tv or whatever like uh, when gunther loses he loses he, he'll tap out he'll like do whatever you know like and so it's a, he'll lose solidly and um so that's what i hope happens i think the main event scene might be a little too busy until probably SummerSlam time so i'm thinking maybe he'll hold on to it until probably uh, SummerSlam, and then I hope he loses to Dragunov because I think the only way Dragunov can debut and make an immediate impact is to beat Walter or Gun- Gunther. Yeah, and him be like one of the only people that can beat Gunther, which sets them up for WrestleMania match down the road. Um, yeah, that's an awesome idea for sure. Yeah, good, good stuff. Uh, who do you got? What's your uh, best match of the year? Your best pay per view? Sorry, uh, best pay per view. A tough one um what what the, what did i submit to you you said all in I said all in i'm gonna keep that as my answer because it's probably the most um important pay-per-view in aew history every match on the show was good like there wasn't anything that was you know a five star but the whole lineup was was good there wasn't really a terrible match uh on the, on the whole thing as I said it was very important to the history of aew the most tickets ever sold to a wrestling event in wrestling history so pay-per-view of the year goes to all in nice that's fair yeah i, I forget like especially like the way that the year is ending i it just seems like aew is like uh, it's over dramatic, but it feels like AEW is just on its last legs, <laughs> and it's not the case. I know, but it just seems so uh, removed from where it was when it began uh, that you forget that it had this huge uh, show. You know that they sold, you know, uh, all these tickets for, and the main event was MJF and Adam Cole. So which i don't think is the reason why they sold all those tickets either like i don't think that that's a main event that sells 70 plus thousand tickets um but it's like you know all all of the uh uh, the gods in the undercard of course one of them being cm punk and uh you know it's an important pay-per-view for uh aw for that reason as well um because punk got into a racket with Jack Perry and who knows what the story is but the bottom line is we haven't seen Jack Perry since and CM Punk is now with the competitor um so uh yeah a lot of fallout from that pay-per-view for sure very important one now uh, what else do we have uh, hold on now. let me do my transition <laughs> Okay, so we didn't do worst pay per view, but we did do uh, worst moment. Um, yeah, so I'll, let's do worst moment if you want. I'll, I'll take the lead in this one. I I kind of had two. The first one uh, is, as I said, I don't really watch the the raw on a weekly basis, and I do try to catch the pay per views as much as I can. But as far as I can tell two worst moments for me one would be the return of nia Jax. i don't think she does anything That's what you at all. sent in yeah <laughs> i don't think she does anything at all for women's division but set it back 10 years um she's just fucking horrible like she's so horrible she's funny like my whole her thing yeah. her we all know nia Jax is my whole okay yeah. that's her that's what she's gonna leave so yeah if we can get in my whole post, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other reverse moment um, is 
for AEW, unfortunately, and it's what we just talked about at All In, the CM Punk incident. That is by far the most horrible incident that could have happened for AEW this year. They lost to Bret and Butter and Punk. They lost to number one merch seller. They lost their guy that the Warner Brothers wanted on their show to you know, have on the streaming service, which is why they're probably going to lose it to Raw. I mean, it's a whole bunch of shit that yeah. happened because of that incident. So I'm calling the CM Punk Jack Perry incident at all in the worst moment of 2023. Nice. Well, that was that was mine on paper was the CM Punk failure. Um, so off the top of my head, I don't know if this counts or if this is like uh, uh, bad news or, or not fair. But um, why don't we say uh, Brett, the death of Bray Wyatt would be uh, uh, the worst moment in wrestling this year. Um, it was it was shocking. Um, he, you know, um, I mean, he was supposed to get married, I think, a couple of weeks ago, uh, left behind uh, a couple of kids and a wife. So that's just in the personal thing. And then I, I read also that uh, his dad, IRS, lost his mother a couple of weeks before Bray died. So just uh, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of shit. Um not even to even get into the hole that it leaves in in uh, wrestling and the what ifs you know i mean uh uh his matches you know arguably couldn't ever measure up to his creativity behind the scenes but he had that amazing return in 2022 um no idea where that story was going but always have the um cena uh fireplace firefly funhouse match which was uh you know one of the first uh covid era uh, cinematic matches and probably the best one uh certainly the one that i've rewatched the most uh brilliant stuff so yeah that would be mine touche rest in peace bray wyatt i got you on that one didn't i fucking cm punk how cold are you? You put Bray <laughs> in your worst match and then not even talk about his death. <laughs> All right, so we'll switch it up. We're going to best moment, best moment of the year. Um, are we both in agreement on this one? No, we're not because I saw what yours was. Um, okay. And I think we'll just do you you could go first because mine will transition into your next category anyway so go ahead best moment of the year is cm punk's return at the survivor series yeah it was awesome and i was there i don't know if you knew that uh, <laughs> i happened to be there <laughs> uh and it was good and uh, had you not picked it i probably would have picked that myself i mean i was in shock i don't know like that's my only experience ever with like a big wrestling moment and i don't know how people are making noise during that like to me the more natural response would be come out and people would just be like because that's what I was doing. I didn't say shit, man. I was just like speechless. Oh, man. Many times I've been jumping literally up and down. And like, ah, just screaming. Yeah. I, I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a good one. My best moment of the year, uh, my favorite moment, my most replayed moment is probably Dominic Mysterio's WrestleMania entrance. Nice. Um, yeah, which Dominic has had a hell of a year. He uh, and, um, you know, I mean, that moment sits right atop of it. I, I don't know if Dominic's won a fucking match this year. I know that he's the he oh, is. I, I know that he's had the most wrestling matches of the year uh, or second to Cody, maybe he's one or two. Uh, and yeah, jobs and Dominic. I mean, when he was at Survivor Series, like the booze were amazing it was just he's so like over as a heel he's so fun to hate on and uh that uh entrance is hilarious uh coming to the ring with the police guard of this you know little fucking skeet 
like <laughs> trying to look like badass is so funny so uh so cool uh not cool actually it's like so lame that it's that it's hilarious and he looked so much like ray when he was wearing his mask too uh really uh really good stuff so that is my uh what was that moment of the year so i'm really glad you said that thank you thank you for pointing out that uh, because i love that match i love that ray match i love the whole storyline leading up to that wrestlemania match i think that was just good shit. and that entrance uh, yeah i loved it at, this, at the time we talked about it in detail and good stuff just good stuff so with that in mind our picks for now this is unfortunate because we're going to end this whole thing with with uh no no we could i was going to say we're going to end it with the worst a uh, worst of moment but where uh, best wrestler not necessarily best but your wrestler of the year is why not i'm gonna do the thing Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> yes, of course. So did you, uh, you don't, uh, there was no swaying for you in your mind about, uh, is there anybody nipping at his heels? Yeah, absolutely. Will Ospreay was nipping at his heels. He's the only one in my list who actually had two matches. Um, he's just consistently great. And he's going to be, um, a really good get for AEW when he starts wrestling over there full time. They're going to have to build the whole promotion around him, which is not a bad thing because he's like 97 Shawn Michaels mixed in with, I don't know, man, Rey Mysterio. Like he's got the whole package. Um, I can't wait to see all of Will Ospreay's 2024 stuff. But this year, 2023, nobody in my mind has improved more and has been more entertaining than one Dominic Mysterio. Absolutely. Um, especially where you see where he came from, um, which obviously went a whole lot into how he is as a heel, but uh, myself included, people uh, had written him off um, when he was the short haired, squeaky baby face that was taken on Seth Rollins. People were openly, uh, people, you know, other wrestlers are getting uh, uh, released from their contracts and people are like, why is Mysterio's kid still there? But uh, man, did he uh, turn it around, hey? He did, man. And like this thing with Rhea Ripley, it gives me all of the China slash Eddie Guerrero, uh, Mamacita, Latino Heat vibes all over again. Um, Rhea Ripley too, man. I have some predictions later on that involve her for 2024. Yeah. But for right now, Dominic Mysterio, he keeps improving. He's just getting better and better and better. He just made a event in Madison Square Garden with CM Punk. I mean, the sky is the limit for Dominic Mysterio, man. Just getting started. That's right. And CM Punk, I assume, was the one that asked to work with him, too. Um, and so CM Punk, uh, uh, you know, uh, sees in Dominic the same stuff that he saw in MJF. Um, and he was right. And, and he and he is typically right. You got to give it to him uh, about that. And so, yeah, um, really, uh, really cool. Really impressed. It all started with that uh, getting arrested at home and uh telling uh rhea ripley to to call a uh, priest and call finn balor <laughs> call his mommy uh and yeah just um you know he's solid in the ring and he doesn't really do any like i mean mjf the stuff that he's saying is like burns or whatever but it's just one of those things where you can't it's almost like you know somebody getting over it's like you can't really say what it is but people just love to hate on this guy they don't even want to hear him like he doesn't have to say anything no, um, just, that intangible factor that it factor you know yeah. Good stuff. Uh, my so you already mentioned my wrestler of the year. It was a debate, uh, but um, between Swerve Strickland and my pick, who is Rhea Ripley. Um, she had that match with Charlotte at uh, WrestleMania, and it is just dominated. Uh, 
just dominated uh, uh, the women's uh, stuff. She, you know, she's the second coming of China, and she's working with guys that will be a lot more uh, helpful to her uh, development than what China had to go through. So she's, you know, boys are going to are going to let her go over and stuff. Um, and she is just super hot. <laughs> she is so <laughs> fucking yeah. hot man like um i just you know a- again at survivor series like i just went into and uh, that match is bad and she's had like not great matches but it's her opponent's part which is a larger conversation about uh women's wrestling not being where uh people are pretending that it is but she's the real deal and she's solid and she's uh she's just so over again like i think she's supposed to be healed but everybody loves her and she's got this really awesome look um and uh yeah i mean nobody's dominated um their division more than rhea ripley doesn't matter what gender you are it doesn't matter what age you are everybody loves rhea ripley yeah. she just got that connection and they just said she's so fucking hot god damn she is she's so hot <laughs> <laughs> she likes it too like i mean she, she like yeah she plays into it in a way that other women wrestlers don't where she's like give me your worst you know um and i think it works for her because i think you know i mean the like guys are, are obviously wrestling marks too uh, myself i put myself would be intimidated as fuck to see her in person so she's good she's smart smart girl obviously <laughs> now we go to the other side of things um worst wrestler fall off so the wording of this is like uh is purposeful because it's not like who's been shit all year it's who started off in a place that was really good in 2022 and just for booking reasons personal reasons technical reasons whatever uh fell off and are nowhere near where they were in the card um i'll go first mine is bobby lashley Mm. uh even in this year he started off with a program so i mean bobby lashley when he was the uh almighty um i mean my god when he was doing his thing uh with um with Shelton and Cedric and uh MVP uh Hurt Business right is that what they're called yeah that was awesome and then even when they took him away from that and he had MVP and he stood on his own and he was finally WWE champion he was fucking wicked he looked awesome his entrance was awesome his matches were great um you know he everybody thought that uh that drew mcintyre was going to beat him at mania in 2022 they kept it on him they kept it on for a while and then even at the start of the year he had a program with lesnar he did good in that and then fuck, he's just gone like nothing nothing going not in the conversation he's got this weird thing where he's healed now but people are cheering him they're trying to do like i guess the hurt business 2.0 with the street profits but that magic is not there. Um, so that's my pick. It's unfortunate because I, I, I was not a Bobby Lashley fan. He came around, you know, he was doing that Trump stuff. I was long gone, uh, uh, from uh, watching weekly wrestling. I thought that, I mean, he has the definition of a baby face. Um, couldn't talk. His voice was high, blah, blah, blah. Um, didn't see much in him, but he won me over and now he's gone. So I hope he comes yep. back. Aaron. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Worst fall off. I, my original pick, and I still might stick with it. I'm just debating it in my head. Uh, I have Jimmy Uso in my in my mind as the worst fall off. I have to throw Jericho up there as well, but I don't know if Jericho started the year off uh, on a high note and just went down or if he's just been, I don't, I don't know. Jericho is definitely in the conversation though, I think, but Jimmy Uso, I'm going to stick with Jimmy as the worst fall off. He was in, you know, the tag champs, longest reigning tag team champions at the beginning of the year, hitting into WrestleMania in a very hot program against Sami Zayn and uh, I guess Kevin Owens as well. Um, the bloodline thing was red hot at the time. Main event of WrestleMania. WrestleMania. 
like night one, but like, whatever. But still, yeah, it's still main event of WrestleMania. And then what has happened since? He got kicked out of the bloodline. He fucked over his brother. And now he's a lapdog lackey. I don't even know if he's in the bloodline right now. I, I, who knows what's going on with that shit? So he went from main event WrestleMania to. Yeah. Eat a bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, somebody else that could have been in conversation for wrestler of the year, even though he was in the worst main event, Jay Uso. I mean, I never would have thought that there was any singles hope for either of those guys. Oh, yeah. And, oh. but Jay's gotten over and Jimmy doesn't, uh, doesn't appear to have it. He has not flourished on the breakup of the Usos. Say that Jimmy is the marginality of the two is an understatement, I think yeah well and i mean honestly it wasn't until the bloodline like one of the best lines that jay said in his leo to his first match with roman was you know people say uh people say which one are you i wouldn't be able to tell you the difference between those two guys up until the bloodline thing and then uh jay was the guy that was good and jimmy was the guy that kept on getting busted for drinking and driving so (laughs) <laughs> that's how i keep I, yeah <laughs> um okay and uh rolling right along we are going now into our final category which was a late edition which is what is your hot take of the year which would be um you know uh, at a certain point in time it could have been that the bloodline thing had jumped the shark if we had said it last year maybe uh but now it's that's not that much of a hot take but what is something that you feel in your soul about wrestling that you um that you agree with that the world seemingly is against you aaron Mm. i'll let you go first well mine was going to be what i thought yours was uh do you remember it or do you have something new because if not oh right yes thank you for reminding me it just came back to me holy fucking shit <laughs> See, you, you, that was you not <laughs> forgetting yeah okay what, what is it again say it all right seth rollins is fucking trash yeah. and the world title that he's holding means less now than it ever did when it debuted uh it's it means nothing. It a, means absolutely nothing. And Seth Rollins fucking sucks. I'll say it again. Yeah, I, I just don't get it with Seth Rollins. And seeing him live, um, which I think was the first time, was like really solidified my feelings about him. He's just some dude. Uh, his gimmick is stupid. Like, he just is ridiculous. I don't know what he uh, means. And, you know, I like Seth Rollins when he was the Monday Night Messiah or whatever, and he had Buddy Murphy with him and the fire and the flames. Like, I understood what was going on there. Now, this is just like some fucking nerd doing a joker impression pretty much and wearing his wife's clothing and it's just not uh not impressive his matches don't mean much to me um thank god cm punk wants to work with him because it's making him interesting but uh even his promo with with cm punk reminded me a lot of edge and matt hardy where it was like clearly who's better and like cm punk didn't even have to say anything uh rollins like when you tell somebody i hate you with everything you know what i mean like same thing as like the equivalency of matt hardy going i want you to die in a car accident you know um apparently that was all unscripted the uh, triple h just gave him both the microphones to go do your thing and that's yeah. what it said i hate you with every fiber of my being yeah yeah <laughs> all right (laughs) like like, why you know cm punk was the one that told that asked that suggested seth rollins uh to be in the shield like um cm punk wanted dean ambrose seth rollins and chris hero to be the shield and they kiboshed chris and put roman reigns in instead so um yeah, so I mean, it just is nonsense. Um, but really, again, like what Seth Rollins is all about, which is like, I don't know what he's all about. Doesn't make any sense. What's the gimmick? What is the gimmick? I don't get it. No. Nobody gets it. 
So I I completely agree with you on that. That would be my pick. And so I had to go searching for what my hot take is. And what I came up with was my hot take is that we will eventually miss Vince McMahon at the helm of the WWE. That's my hot take. Um... That's right. You can't agree with it, can you? But I believe it. And I believe it for a couple of reasons. One, I liked Vince McMahon in charge of the WWE because it made AEW better. And I thought that it was more competitive. I don't find it's as exciting now to watch the WWE because Triple H is way better at his job. Let's be frank. Two, the craziness of of, uh, McMahon and what could happen at any given week that's gone. You remember when the allegations of him and his sexual misconducts happened, he went, he just on the drop of a hat decided to open up SmackDown, came out and said that, you know, <laughs> said that he's going to be here forever. And then that was the last time anybody ever saw him on camera. Um, there's just uh, a lot. I think that the WWE certainly, and, and even the behind the scenes, like his uh, usurping uh, the power and kicking his own daughter off. Like there's just a, a, a swagger, a Donald Trumpness of the way that he handles his business that the WWE. WWE is not going to have anymore uh, because it's owned by somebody else and it's going to become a way more corporate, way more distilled uh, company. Uh, it's owned for the first time by somebody that was not raised in the wrestling uh, uh, atmosphere. And they're already talking about cutting down on house shows and stuff like that. And God knows what other kind of crazy stuff that they might be thinking about that Vince would never do, um, but they're going to do to either cut, uh, cut corners or to uh, bend the knee like a lot of corporations are forced to do. So that's my hot take. It's a good one. It's a good one. Hell yeah. All right. There you go. I don't, I don't agree with it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> I didn't really think about it that much. I just started talking. Boom. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Thank you. So uh, do you think that we missed any uh, major moments this year? Um, if we did, as, as I said, we don't watch the product. So yeah. our apologies, you know, if anybody else that they're watching has a favorite match of theirs, please uh, list it in the comments. Um, I, may, I may not have seen it, so I would like to see it myself. So please, if anybody has any suggestions for match, moment, pay-per-view, whatever of the year, please leave it in the comments. That's great. That's great because it's inviting, uh, it's inviting engagement, which is what we need to do. Error. Yes, sir. Something we've right. lost a little bit over the Christmas Christmas break, but we'll be back in full force this month. Lots of good things on the horizon for us at the BWF Wrestling Podcast. There you go. But um, now when I talk about predictions, I mean, you can do some stuff that's going to be what I would consider to be safe predictions. It's just like Gunther is going to be world champion. Um, you know, uh, I think um, I think even saying something like raw is going to be on uh, a Warner Brothers product. I think that that's kind of a safe thing. So I want I want to hear some kind of crazy predictions um, off the top of my head. 
one uh, would be Triple H is going to die in 2024. It's off the top of my head. That's a prediction of mine. He's got a heart thing going on, a lot of stress. I don't want it to happen, but Jeez. that's that's the thing that I will predict. <laughs> Aaron, what do you got? Holy fuck. Okay. Uh, shout out to Gander on the shirt. It's awesome. That's our hometown, by the way. Gander, Newfoundland. Look it up. They don't need to look it up, man. 9-11. Everybody knows about Gander. We did help a lot on 9-11. But <laughs> I'm going to say for my prediction for 2024, maybe even going into 2025, is that Rhea Ripley will win a major singles title that's not a women's title. So maybe the Intercontinental. I, I, don't, I, I honestly think she's above the U.S., so I think she's yeah. either going to win the Intercontinental and um, probably have that leading into 2025 and then have Dominic Mysterio screw over Rhea Ripley and lead into a feud for WrestleMania 41. That is my prediction. Nice. All right. You know, I'm going to take mine back. Mine is a bad, bad mojo. I shouldn't wish or predict somebody's, somebody's death on somebody like that. Uh, how about I think... Um, by the end of 2024, by the end of 2024, I don't know if this is a big enough prediction. Jay White will go to the WWE. Is that a big one? Is that big enough? Nah. No? Hey, I mean, I think that Triple H one is, is pretty crazy. Um, like I, power, something well, like that. Maybe a Shane or Stephanie McMahon will come back into power a little bit. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. I got something now. Okay. Uh, forget about that Triple H thing. Triple H, I don't want you to go anywhere. I don't predict your death. I think that you will lead the WWE into great horizons. Here's my prediction for 2024. I think a McMahon will show up on the AEW product. Oh, that's a good one. There yeah. you go. I like that. Better. Again, Definitely. Triple H, no disrespect. You're gonna you're gonna live. You're gonna live a long life, long, healthy life. Thank you very much. But yeah. Um now with that being said, if a McMahon does show up, who do you think is the highest chance? Shane. Linda Shane? Yeah, that's would be mine too. Yeah. So as we promised, folks, here it is. Finally, the interview that I've been uh, teasing, hoping, praying that would happen for weeks. It is here, the interview with Kevin Sullivan and his evil companion, Andrew Anderson. Um, Kevin had a little bit of technical difficulties logging on for the first little bit, as you'll see, but we do get him on, and it is a great interview. This interview is proudly sponsored by Create Commercial Mortgage Services. Thank you so much, Rusty, for for everything you've done shout out once again to lemon tree marketing and chris barons all the advertising they do for us over facebook um great to have you guys on board and we can bring you interviews like this to the bwf nation so once again this interview is brought to you by create commercial mortgage services here's kevin sullivan bwf nation joining us this week we have a very special guest he is the nephew of Arn and Ole Anderson. Uh, he has starred in movies. He's been a bodyguard for rock stars, plus a whole lot more. Uh, thank you for joining us this week. The Purple Haze, Andrew Anderson. What's up, Baron? How are you, man? Oh, good, man. Good. Thank you for joining us, as we said. Thank you for having uh, me. Man, just from talking to you over the past few weeks, I know you have some incredible stories, and I just can't wait to dive into them. <laughs> oh, yeah. we had, we I had a lot of uh, crazy stories and a lot of good stuff that's that's gone on you know i mean uh, at 30 years in the business you know i mean it's been a, it's been a long ride you know i mean uh just going up and down you know the highways with with the likes of uh brutus beefcake kamala uh hammer who was like a father to me man and uh you know obviously kevin sullivan and tito santana and, and tony atlas and all these old legends you know the guys i grew up watching became my mentors in the business and my tag team partner for years was Nikolai Volkov, you know, um, oh, wow. trained by Jimmy Snooker, you know. So, I mean, I, I, I kind of, you know, I, I went in, uh, you know, head first right into the business. It was pretty cool. So, 
Yeah. And, we're, and we're hoping that Kevin will join us in a bit, but I'm just wondering, how was it that you got interested in it in the first place? Were you a fan uh, as a kid? I, growing up, growing up in the business, I was a big fan of the. I was a big fan of wrestling, obviously, and I wanted to be two things. I wanted three things. I wanted to be. I wanted to be either a superhero, a rock star, or a wrestler. Wrestling was my third choice. My first one was superhero, but you couldn't run around. I'm no superpowers. You know, unless you really consider when I eat chili, I, my, my, my gas is kind of toxic, you know, uh, <laughs> so, but, um, but uh, you, you're, you'll you get arrested running around in spandex. So I figured the best spandex to wear was on stage, you know, being a rock star. So I, I want to be in a couple of of uh, of metal bands in, in, in the early, early eight, mid 80s, you know, uh, right out of high school. I graduated high school, promised Catholic high school in New Jersey. Uh here in the u.s in uh, 1985 and uh you know i went right into the metal scene and uh you know but you know it, it, we didn't make it we didn't make it we were too busy partying and everything and you know i i, I went finished college and i got my degrees and uh i became an investment banker and i was bouncing on the weekends at a bar and jimmy snooker walked in and jimmy snooker uh said i want to talk to you hold on kevin's calling me right now um okay. no actually it's not it's scott wilder huh so another <laughs> promoter so, um, so uh, Jimmy Snooker uh, said, I want to talk to you. And he was there with Jeff Miller, the metal maniac, who's more infamous than famous. And, he, you know, he's he's made a mark on the business. He did a lot for people in the business. I mean, he helped a lot of people break in and stuff, too, you know. So he's not a household name like Jimmy Snooker, but Jeff did a lot for me. And they brought me to Gino Caruso, to Mr. Italy, and uh, up in Lake Hiawatha, New Jersey. And I trained there with Jimmy, with Gino, with Jeff. And uh, it was pretty cool with the Maniac and uh, uh, the Executioners, Jerry Fazio and the late Terry Manton, who took the roles of uh, of Killer Kowalski and Big John Studd as the Executioners in WWE for a while. And uh, Terry Manton passed away, I think, in like 1989 or 1990. Uh, maybe, yeah, but I think like 1993 he passed away or something like that. No, wait, what am I talking about? 1990. He died in uh, 2000. I think he passed away in 2000. So... But I think is is Kevin on? Nope. No. Is Kevin, no, no. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know if Kevin got on. But he he was one of the guy one of the guys who helped break me in a lot too. And you know Rocky Jones who wrestled in uh, Portland as Mike Masters, and uh, he just passed away about a year and a half ago. And you know a lot of these guys that I that I broke into business are now gone. You know I mean it's crazy. So I, I, I started then, 90, 90, 92, 93 area, era of wrestling. And, and uh, you know, um, it was, it's was it been a long road, man. I mean, a lot of bumps, a lot of bruises. And, you know, you know how it is. I mean, it's just crazy. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you said Jimmy Snuka discovered you. What was, did he train? Yeah. What was like a typical day of training with, with Jimmy? And uh, Well, like, yeah. first, Jimmy would, Jimmy would smoke a joint. <laughs> he loved his weed. He was smoking. He'd, he'd get all smoked up, but get down and crack open a Budweiser. I'd get in the ring with him, and uh, he'd basically run the shots. He'd run the shots. My first, my first bump was from Metal Maniac crawling up behind me, and uh, on all fours. I didn't know he was there. And uh, Kodiak Bear, uh, Tom Casola hit me with a clothesline, knocked me off, ass over tea kettle, right over him, and I took the bump. And I just remember Jimmy Snooker going. That's the way you do it, brother. That's the way you do it. <laughs> Next thing you know, I was taking double chops from Jimmy Snooker, you know, and uh, taking the bump from there. I mean, I, th I, th I think they had more fun chopping the crap out of my chest. I was so big back then. Back then, I was all gassed up to the max, you know. I looked, I was a big kid, you know, 300 something pounds, you know, bench pressing freaking 550, you know, 600 pounds routinely, you know. So it was, it was pretty cool. So, and, uh, and then, yeah, Gino, Gino Caruso taught me all the technical stuff, you know, I always yeah. work with him, chain wrestling and, and, and psychology. And then later on, you know, they, 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 he paired me up with Nikolai Volkov for the first time. And then, you know, Nikolai, I was the bump horse cause Nikolai didn't really bump. He more like rolled, took an ass bump roll, but Nikolai was great to work with. I mean, he, uh, we worked so many different people. I mean, that, that was uh, just that was an experience in and of itself with their manager john krasuski who wrestled uh managed as uh nikita brezhnikov and 
you know, those are great days, man. I mean, I love Nikolai like like a father. You know, he was a so great guy. You too. were saying, uh, sorry, Andrew. So you were saying that uh, you started. You were already in the gym. You're already a body guy, muscle guy. The performance yeah. element of uh, pro wrestling is that something that came natural to you? Creating a character, well, no, sort of working the crowd. The, the, were you an outgoing? Are you an outgoing type of person? Yes. The, the performance because I was in the music business, I was definitely outgoing. But the wrestling business came a little harder because I was originally a boxer. I was a boxer originally. So leaving my feet was a little tough at first for the first few practices. And I noticed a lot of boxers had that happen. Mickey Rourke had that when they were training him for, for the movie The Wrestler. Riddick Bowe and Andrew Galata were training up at East Coast Pro Wrestling School for to, to have a, a rematch, a wrestling rematch of their classic boxing feud from, uh, from the early 90s. So, I mean, there was a lot of... It was a it was it was hard for me to to to. Now I had a wrestling background also. I wrestled for high school in high school and I wrestled in college. So, but boxing was at that time was what I did. So you know, um, so leaving my feet was kind of tough at first. But once I started bumping, I never stopped. You know, so to this day I love bumping. You know, so I used to love backdrops. I remember the first time I saw Rick Rude take this backdrop. I thought it was insane. But then when I realized, hell, that's pretty fun. You know. I don't yeah. know. Now I regret it. Now all these years <laughs> later, my body's like, what the fuck was I thinking? You know, <laughs> three backdrops in a row. You know, I would have rather did a Tennessee spot, took a hip toss and arm drag and powdered out of the ring. You know? Yeah. So, so what were, who were your favorite, uh, who were your guys growing up? Uh, if you're a fan of wrestling before you got into it. Um, definitely Don Morocco Don Morocco. And it was great because in, uh, in 1999, I got to stay at his house at a tour of cool. Hawaii and uh it was cool and meet his whole family and and uh and that was another thing orchestrated by the metal maniac uh Jeff Miller and uh it was a, it was a great tour and I want to hanging out and meeting him and getting close with Don and Don is a great guy one of to me most underrated performer in the business you know the, the, he was the original rock you know I mean the guy was just amazing great heel you know and uh great interview and just great personality altogether you know, and uh, deceivingly large, deceivingly large. He was a very big guy. And one time when he was body went into bodybuilding around the Ultimate Warrior era, era of the WWE in the, the late 80s, he got so tremendously huge and defined. He was unbelievable. But, uh, you know, uh, I love Don. I loved watching Sergeant Slaughter um, pre um Hulk Hogan versus Slaughter. Right. You know, yeah. When, yeah. Yeah. Early eighties when he was feuding with Pat Patterson. Yeah. Um, the, the triple Master WF. We were just yes, uh, doing yes. a show about the triple WF because of uh, where I'm from, Newfoundland, our uh, claim to fame is sailor white or moon dog. Uh, mm. <clears throat> moon dog who? Bish? Oh, moon yeah, we got Kevin Sullivan here. And hi. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I can't see him. I, I can see, see him. It. I cannot hear him. Ah, ah, technical, technical glitch. I don't know. Hey, Kevin. And now he's gone. Can't see him anymore. But I did That's see a him. Devil. That's a devil for you. Disappearing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. A, a Sailor White, was it? Sailor White. Yeah. yeah Moondog. Uh, he was one of the King. Moondogs. Moondog yeah. Kings. Yeah. Yeah. He was pretty cool, man. He was, he was, uh, he was a tough son of a bitch. Yeah, you know, we were I, watching some stories about him, and he seemed to really like not pull any punches. Uh, no, I, I heard he knocked out a lot of people over the years. Yeah, he knocked out a lot of people, and in, in you know, I heard a lot about him saying, "Hey, let's have a go," you know, <laughs> you know, and just boom. Next thing you know, you're on your ass with a bloody nose and a broken cheekbone. That's you know? what. Yeah, we saw an interview with Al Snow where you're saying he was like literally throwing around benches and stuff like that, just not uh, not playing around at all. Yeah, not a happy yeah. camper. Yeah. No. So yeah. you knew who. You, so when Jimmy Snooker came up, you, you obviously knew who he was. So you were as much of a fan to know that when Jimmy Snooker is coming up to you and saying, "Hey, you could do this," you bro. To let him, me tell you something. Seriously. When I was in high school, I almost got kicked off the wrestling team because I'm going to wrestle barefoot because of Jimmy. Okay, right. that's how yeah. that, that, that was. That was something. You know what I'm saying? And I just yeah. remember my coach, my coach saying to me, "He, uh, Coach Keith Styler, he says to me, he goes." He goes, hey, listen. He goes, Andrew. He goes, you got to put your wrestling boots on. He goes, you're not, you're not Kevin Von Erich. And I was like, 
this guy knows wrestling. He knows real wrestling. <laughs> to me, that was like, he knows who Kevin Von Erich. That's fucking cool. You know, I was like, well, actually, I was trying to be Jimmy Snooker. He goes, okay, whatever. He goes, you know, so it was pretty cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so that blow your mind. And so you get into the business, you go through the training. I'm sure the training was hard as, as all hell. Um, yep. And then you start traveling. And to me, that seems like it's kind of the, one of the coolest parts about it. And also, at times, probably the toughest. So, like, where have you been able to travel? You mentioned you're in Hawaii, which is awesome in its own right. But where have you been able to travel because of uh, being in pro wrestling? Uh, Africa. What's your favorite place? I'll ask you. My favorite place? Oh, yeah. God. I can tell you my least favorite place was Africa. Even better. Even better. We like least um, favorite. Where was it? Africa. Uh, it was Niger Nigeria on a tour with Barbarian yes. ran a tour of, of Nigeria, and it was it was actually pretty scary at some points, you know, because, I mean, we were actually held at, at, a, at a, a compound, and yeah. you couldn't leave the compound. They were there with AK-47s and stuff, and we had we had armed, armed people in the – in the van, the tour van, it was me, Val Venus, Shelton Benjamin, um, Mike Mondo from the Spirit Squad, Kevin Sullivan, the Barbarian, the Warlord, um, Slam Shady. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, he now wrestles as Neil Koloff. He was that's my cat. She's 21 and very vocal. Um, nice. um, and and uh, um, Neil Koloff. Um, who was at the time, you know, he, he wrestled under his real name. I forgot what it is already. I'm just, I'm like, so, oh, uh, um, who else is on the tour? Merengue Warrior, uh, a, a cruiserweight, not very well known, but great worker, very charismatic. He used to do the Merengue dance in the ring and stuff with a mask, a luchador. And it was just a great, great, and Rick Fuller. I can't forget my tag team partner, big Rick Fuller. Yeah. You know, the monster, the monster from Massachusetts, you know, I mean, we had so the detonator is the detonator and the reinforcer on that tour. We were, we were every night with the barb, barb and warlord. And it was just a good time. I mean, uh, uh, up, up until they decided they wanted to run more shows and they held our passports and everything. And, you know, yeah. and we're on the bus, we're on the bus and Kevin will tell you the story. So we're, we're driving on the bus and me, I drank a shitload of water because it was so fucking hot. The bus is stop and go, stop and go. Cause if you're ever in Nigeria or in like countries like Burkina Faso or Ghana, it's so heavily populated in their cities. And to drive from point A to point B, which is like seven, eight miles, or maybe even if it's 50 miles, that'll take you all day because mm -hmm. you can't get anywhere. And the bus is stopping going, I'm getting motion sickness in this thing, you know? I mean, I do amusement park rides, but I'll do roller coasters. I won't do anything that spins. I was getting so fucking sick in this thing. And on top of it, I drank all this water like an idiot, and now I had to piss. <laughs> okay but i just remember looking at, at barb's wife and saying mama i gotta go to the bathroom she was like no no dude no 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 I, said, I gotta go to the bathroom so barb's saying to me barb goes drew no no not now not now hold it in hold it in a little longer i'm like oh fuck i gotta piss so i look at kevin i go kev i'm gonna fucking piss on the fucking floor of this thing so he's like he's like oh come on come on so i go <laughs> walk up to the front <laughs> I knock on the guy's face plate of the, the riot gear that he was wearing. I knock. He wasn't listening to me. I said, I got to go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom. I knocked and I go, me go pee pee. And the guy looks at me, lifts up the helmet and goes, he goes, you want us to stop? And I said, yes. He goes, you have to urinate? I said, yes. He puts the thing back down and then he ignores me. Now I come back, knock on his helmet again. The gun goes down. I put my finger in a barrel of the AK-47. I said, you got to stop this fucking thing now or I'm going to piss. I just remember Kevin going, Jesus fucking Christ. I said, that's all I heard. And everybody was quiet. I get out and I piss. And and as I'm taking a piss, I'm thinking to myself, I hear the safety go off the guns. I'm thinking, fuck, I'm dead. You know, this was stupid. I should have pissed in the bus. You know, what's a little piss on the bags? Who cares? Yeah. You know, we rip each other sometimes anyway doing that. <laughs> so now I, I look at it and they're freaking running freaking mirrors underneath the, the van to make sure under the little tour bus to make sure that we have there's no bombs. Then I look when I realized I saw them doing that. I was like, hey, these guys ain't to hurt us. They're here to help us. Yeah. So I walked in with this bright idea. I was like, hey, guys, you know, these guys are actually on our side. They're not bad once you get to know them, you know. Just don't piss on them, you know. So, <laughs> so, but, but, but it was like it was, it was so, it was such a, a, a stupid, a eureka moment, you know. That you know, but for the moment, I thought I was going to fucking die. And then there were there were other moments like me and Rick Fuller left the compound, and we went to I went out of the compound, and 
people pulled guns on us because they, you know, they didn't want to hurt us, but they wanted to keep us there. They didn't want us to go out because there was a war going on between the Muslims and the Christians at the time yeah. in, uh, in Nigeria. And uh, so it was pretty, it was pretty freaking crazy, you know, but uh, there, who, there were other places, places that like who, I was who, in. So who were you? I'm curious who you were wrestling for in, in a country like that. Are you wrestling for like government workers for like government? It was the government. It yeah, was, it was held by, by the government. Yeah. And so, the government. and so what were they like? Like, what was it like dealing with them? Like, were they, um, the, the, were they the hotels, were, the hotels were, 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 were as good as they can be. Yeah. You know, I mean, one hotel was really good. The other one was kind of, eh. you know, I mean, you, you look, you, you was, it was, it was all good. The, but one, we were staying in this, like, um, this church compound, it was a giant church um, run by uh, the prophet T.B. Joshua. Uh, you can Google him, prophet T.B. Joshua. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, I couldn't believe the amount of people that he had in this this compound that he would have every Sunday. They would have this 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 congregation that were coming from all over Africa, and they would give him money. They would give this guy money, and he would do the faith healing shit. Yeah, you know he, all the faith English. Now we went in there one time, in the back. You know me, Fuller, Kevin. We were walking through. We saw them rehearsing that shit, putting alka seltzer in their mouth and doing the. And Kevin looked at the guy and goes, "I used to do that all the time." <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, they they cut us out, and sent us in the back, and everything. But you know, the, they, they, I mean, they had their faith. They 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 the people loved it. I mean, I heard he passed away recently. I mean, he was a hell of a nice guy. You know, and we wound up getting pretty big bonuses and everything from him. You know, I mean, from the tour. But some of the a lot of the guys, some of the guys, you know, were like skeptical or everything. Like, would I go back? I don't know. I don't think so. You know, but um, it was You've it was experienced interesting. Experienced it once, you know. Yeah, I don't think I would do it again. I mean, I mean, if the money was right, I would. You know, because now I know it's at least safe. Yeah. Than it was, you know. But uh, at the time, we we didn't know. At the time, we were that we went in blind. You know, I mean, you're you're at their mercy. You know, so, I mean, I can imagine what those guys went through when they wrestled in Korea for WCW in uh, in North uh, Korea. Yeah. I can yeah. imagine what they went through. You know, I talked to Scotty Steiner and Rick Steiner about it, and they were an, an animal. Uh, um, Joe Laurinaitis was one of my best friends, man, you know, when he passed away. As a matter of fact, I still have the message he left calling me, saying he's going to call me the next night. It was his anniversary. He's going going to the lake with uh, with his wife, Kim, and he left me a message the night, be night before he died. So that next, yeah, that was crazy. The morning before he died. So, wow. um, but yeah, he, he would tell me the Korea was crazy, you know? Yeah. A lot of, that was, that was like, like something crazy. Yeah. Your rooms are bugged and everything, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's impressive how, uh, just like absolutely global pro wrestling is like, there's no culture, yeah. you know, that's what sort of we've been discovering as we've been doing the shows, like every culture, every small town, every like place, uh, is touched by, uh, pro wrestling in some sort of way. I wrestled um, in ma a massive show in Berlin for Alex, Wright. Mm. Um, uh, well, actually for Otto Wands, actually, um, Alex Wright was on the show for Otto Wands in the early millennium. And, uh, and that same, th that wrestler's massive show in Berlin would do another show in Heidelberg, which was like an indie show in, 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 in the States or Canada where you'd have like 50, 60 people. And then the next night we'd do another show in, uh, in, in Dusseldorf in the front of like 4,000 people, you know? Wow. So in, in wrestling is just, it's the same all over the, all over the globe. You know, you know I wrestled small shows in, in, in Japan where, where indie shows like that, that run the same, the same gamut, you know, that you have like 30, 40 people, you know what I'm saying? And then you got the shows that have big, big, big stars and still they don't draw that much, you know? So it's, it's, it's like that all over the, all over the world. I think it's a global phenomenon. So mm -hmm. it is a sport. People, people, people say it's not a sport. People put it down. People say it's sport entertainment. To me, wrestling is sport. It's not sports entertainment. It's my business. It's my, it's something that I do and I'm proud of it. You know, when, really when you look back at sort of your, your whole career and some, and somebody says like, y uh, you know, name your favorite match or like, or when you think of yourself, like I'm a wrestler, what's the match that you, uh, are the most proud of 
uh, your most favorite? I I wrestled an indie show at the for East Coast Pro Wrestling at the um, the New Jersey Expo Center in two thousand five or two thousand four against Mario Bacara, who who uh, wrestled under the name of Mo Sexy at the time. And it was in a steel cage match, and Sergeant Slaughter came up to me and, and him and said it was the best cage match he's seen in years and one of the best cage matches he's seen bar none. We wrestled 10 minutes, 15, 10 minutes without even touching the sides of the cage. Mm. And then after that, it was just start doing bumps off the buckles and the ropes and hitting the side of the cage. And then we started doing stuff off the top rope. I hit him with a German. He hit me with a German off the top rope while I was trying to climb out of the cage. They hit me with a, uh, I, I superplexed him off the top rope while he was actually, his body was on the top of the cage. I superplexed him off and we did the, I did the senton. He did the frog splash and it was just, it was just an amazing thing off the top of the cage. It was just, it was just a great, great match. And then I had tons of great matches with, with crowbar, me and crowbar. Yeah. Um, just uh, that guy could, that guy could, he, he calls himself timeless. Well, you know what? His body's holding up more, better than most people I know. You know, I mean, he's 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 freaking amazing. You know, I mean, he is, and uh, he's just been kicking ass. And uh, right now, his body of work that he's doing now—I mean, he took a lot of time off. I know he had knee replacements, and everything, but still, he's just to do that with knee replacements. Just amazing, you know. So he just hasn't did stopped. Always, uh, sorry, did you always wrestle under the Andrew Anderson name, or was that? I wrestled. That I wrestled first to start out wrestling as the Siberian Tiger. And I teamed with Nikolai for a long time as a Siberian Tiger and did the Cold War throwback things for a while. They paired me up with Nikolai for a while, and, and it was it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, did some matches, teamed with Nikolai Volko, Nikolai Volko with uh, Ivan Kola a few times. And, uh, you know, had matches, you know, with Nikita Koloff and Ivan in the Carolinas, you know, on indie shows here and there, you know. But for the most part, it was, yeah, with, with, a lot of it was with – with Nikolai Volkov or singles matches as a Siberian Tiger or a team with other people who did the foreign gimmick, having the Iron Sheet come out and manage me on stuff when Nikolai was not around. And, you know, when he was, you know, it was pretty cool. A lot of cool stuff. So Siberian did Tiger you, was. Uh, how did you transition into the Anderson name? Did you have to get permission? Uh, from Anderson's Nova, or? Nova, M Mikey Nova. Um, Mike turns around and said to me, um, we were at a show. Uh, actually, it was a, uh, uh, what was it? It was uh, it was in uh, Jersey. It wasn't Jersey Championship Wrestling. It was, it was um, uh, Jersey All Pro Wrestling. Jersey All Pro Wrestling, which was famous for all the indie guys in the early nineties, like CM Punk. Everybody went through Jersey All Pro Wrestling. Mm -hmm. CM Punk, um, Colt, uh, Colt Cabana, um, everybody was there. I mean, it was a who's who. And uh, I was on a show, and Nova. Just got off of doing the Hollywood Supernova gimmick in, in ECW. He turned around and said, and he, oh, he was actually doing it then. He, he said to me, he goes, dude, main event was King Kong Bundy versus Dan Severn for the NWA title. And I was wrestling against, um, I think I was wrestling against Jason Knight or Pitbull Gary Wolf. I think it was one or the other. I was wrestling the Jason Knight or Pitbull Gary Wolf. Okay. And, uh, and he came up and he said, he goes, they surprised me at the end of the match. They came out. We talked about this, but we never thought we'd do it. He, they came up and they said, "Hey, you know, instead of instead of coming out and wrestling, instead of being Siberian Tiger, we know you're not Russian." And I was like, "Whoa, you know, <laughs> this is like <laughs> the gimmick here in the middle of the ring." And they were like, "You, you know, you're an Anderson. You know, come on, just come out, use your real name, be an Anderson, just get out of your your family's foot's the shadow and foot's you know those big feet to fill you know whatever those big shoes to fill yeah so and that's how it transitioned and then um i forgot what the guy's name in wcw who was calling himself the reinforcer at the time um but he stopped using that name he retired and crowbar says to me in like 2000 and for 2001 to 2002 he says he doesn't use the name he said chris chris ford says to me he goes why don't you call yourself? Arn was the enforcer. You're the reinforcer. So since like 2000, I've been the reinforcer. Andrew Anderson it took Andrew Anderson. Now it's Andrew the reinforcer Anderson. And then just about about six years ago, seven years ago, Kevin decides to give me Mark Lewin's original robe, 
and uh, as the Purple Haze come out and do the Purple Haze gimmick, you know, and you know, and I just remember Jerry Sachs saying, hey, that's a great spot. All you got to do is walk around, roll your eyes, and start barking at people. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> hit, them, hit them with the chops across the head. You can last like another 20 years, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> well. Now, the original Purple Haze, as you mentioned, um, Mark Lewin, uh, there's a promo back in, I wanted to ask Kevin about it, but th there's a promo back in uh, Championship Wrestling Florida where they're on a beach and yep. there's a you're talking for like three or four minutes to Kevin's talking to the camera, and then all of a sudden you see this man just emerge from the ocean and he's yep. close to a certain camera range, and yep. it's Lewin, and he says that he swam all the way from from Singapore. So Singapore, uh, yep. <laughs> that was done by Hogan, old Hogan's old uh, Ho Hogan's place years ago in Tampa. There, that's where Ho Hogan's place. That was way before Hogan had the place there, but Hogan had that beach bar there years years later. But we actually went, it was now something else. And we refilmed that with me doing it with the bonfire coming out as the purple haze, you Did know? You? Nice. Yeah. Okay. But we, we never really, we never really put it out anywhere. I don't even know who has the footage for it, you know? And Kevin put the Mark Lewin's original robe on me. And, uh, and I, and then, uh, this past January 10th, I was wrestling in, uh, Illinois for, uh, Southern Illinois championship wrestling, Herb Simmons, uh, company with the uh it's probably the oldest one in north america the oldest company that's still running in north america um and a flight home jet blue lost my uh lost my freaking uh robe my boots my gear and oh, that wow. robe was lost in it you know along with about a thousand dollars worth of my shit you know crazy and then what did they give me what did they, what did they give me they give me a a Four hundred dollar voucher, or three hundred dollar voucher, and three hundred dollars uh, a check for three hundred dollars because they they can't do any more for it after the litigation back and forth with them. It was just bullshit, you know. Because it, it, it is bullshit. Yeah. It is. It is. You know, JetBlue, fuck you. That's what I got to say. JetBlue, yeah. yeah, yeah. We got Air Canada up here. Same nonsense. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Same shit. That's Air terrible. Canada, Air Canada was always cool, pretty cool th with me. I mean, I never had a problem with them. I uh, mean, yeah, Air, you got to fly Canada. with them more. They and they uh, always I, rub it in our face that they're the number one rated uh, uh, fucking airline. Uh, disagree, Air Canada. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do hashtag fuck Air Canada. I got to do hashtag right. blue. So, um. How did you transition into being a promoter? Um, what was it about being a promoter that sort of, uh, you know, got you got you going, got you horny? I was at Cauliflower Alley. I was at ah. Cauliflower Alley Club in uh, in Vegas in 2016, in 2015, 16. And Bruce Tharp was running the NWA at the time. He had all these things said. I got no real, no real. Um, representation of the national wrestling alliance in new york in the tri-state area he said he says whispers in my ear come on come on you got to do it. bring it bring bring wrestling all and i was working a lot in texas at the time um and all the texas people were like and johnny mantel just brought up the uh pro wrestling hall of fame in texas and uh you know he he, he took over the uh tony villano's uh, Hall of Fame that was in um, in uh, in New York, and uh, they brought it up to Texas, and so we did this whole thing. Where we had this whole big signing of the you know on the old world class, or the old oh, um, the old sofa from uh, and desk that were in uh, Fritz's office from World Class Championship Wrestling. So Bruce Thart, myself, uh, uh, a couple other people were there, um, and. Uh, trying to think who else was there i think i think i think rod price was there california stud aka uh hardway rod price whatever he called himself at the time but i love i love rod he's one of my best friends and uh so hardway was there with us and we signed at this thing and uh i and i joined the nwa and uh i ran three really good shows in the new york area and then uh i, I billy corgan bought the nwa and, and all of a sudden the franchises were you know, a year, a year and a half later, it, it was gone and uh, we couldn't run. But Billy let me run the last show. The third one, he let me use some of the talent like 
like uh, the national champion and the North American heavyweight championship. You let me have them there and, and they wrestled. But Tim Storm was doing something for the, and uh, Billy's NWA at the time. So the NWA champion couldn't be there. So, and that was Tim Storm at the time. So we went ahead and, uh, and uh, we ran that last show. And, uh, and then we were going to call ourselves Tri-State Wrestling Alliance. But I, I was like, you know, fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, too much stress. I'd ra- I'm, I'm, I'm losing my hair as it is. I'd rather wrestle, you know. I'm still, I'm a wrestler, man. I ain't a promoter, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't want to be, you know, I'm one of the boys, man, you know, so. Yeah, it's not, it wasn't worth a headache. You're talking to the wrong guys when it comes to uh, losing your hair, by the way. As far as I can tell, you have a, you have a luscious, envious head of hair. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Here's Kevin. I think Kevin came on, didn't he? Uh, I've trying. been trying to get on. I hear him. Thirty minutes. Are okay, you on getting... now? Is he on? No, we can hear yeah. him. We cannot see him. We can hear you, Kevin. You're gonna have to hit your video button. No I hit the video button. We, we were so much bigger than they were. Let me try again. You had to okay. Rick and Scott. Can you so see me? No, but I can hear you. Unbelievable. Can we do you it see? like that then? That's fine. You that's have, fine. We can have you we can have audio, I guess, right? Yeah, that's fine. Go for it. Okay. All right. Well sorry all, guys. It's okay, Kevin. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. It's an honor to have you on the show. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. It, it said I needed an ID. I didn't have the ID. Oh, mm. all right. Sorry about that. But that's at least Bishop's. That's all on um, Bishop. Bishop, you almost ruined this for us with your ID needing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but we're all together now. Hey, Patrick, you remind me a lot of Jerry Sags, the way you dressed with the glasses on. <laughs> that's the nicest that thing anybody's ever said to me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay if sags was here he'd call you a dildo <laughs> <laughs> so what's okay. going on guys all hey. right kevin yeah uh i just want to quickly ask you how did you get into to the business were you a fan growing up as, as a kid did you have any favorites yeah i was a, i had uh first match i ever had was in Montreal, and uh, that's when the Rougeaus and the uh, and uh, the Vachons were there. Right. Well, I never got trained. I just put they just put me in the ring. It was crazy. Absolutely. They never smartened you up, right, Kev? Never smartened me up. I think uh, I didn't get swatted up until you told me last week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kev. Yeah. They're, they're curious how many times and if you worked with Sailor White. Never worked with him. I, I know he was a great performer, uh, but I never worked with him. He was, was he... Was he at Vince's WWE when you were there? No, no. He was in a. He 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 was there either before me or right after me. I'm not sure which one. Okay. Yeah. Because these these two guys are obsessed with Sailor White. <laughs> uh, I from what I gather, anybody that saw him. That's what, that he he was a fabulous performer. Yeah, he was. He was. I heard he was a t- legit tough guy too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's awesome, uh, Kevin. I also wanted to ask you. You started off your career as a, as a baby face, right? Um, yeah. How did you How did you transition into the the Taskmaster, the the Devil Cult gimmick. Uh, I know there's a pandemic going on in real life at the time. Is that where you got your inspiration? Yeah. Plus MTV, Billy Idol, uh, Michael Jackson. Uh, horror movies were back in genre. Ozzy um, Osbourne. 
Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, our good friend Alex Cooper. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Alex, Alex is a buddy of mine in cabins. Yeah. So. Uh, awesome. That, that's how I kind of fell into it, guys. And you were uh, you were doing this around the time where it was like, I mean, you were doing it inside, outside of the ring. You were going grocery shopping. You were still doing the. Uh, I, I was going grocery shopping with my ro with my robe on, but I didn't talk about it. I didn't preach about it or anything like that. You know what I mean? Did you receive any backlash from the public? Like, how was it trying to live the, the kayfabe? Like, did they treat you any, any differently? Did they, pardon, did they what? The public. Backlash. Did they, yeah. Did you get any public? What about the Midwest? Oh, uh, when I went to the Crockett's, I got fired. Uh, not fired, but told I give it down because uh, the people were so hot the Crockett's company got so much heat on themselves about it. But I started it in Florida. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Florida was the uh, sin city of the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it made it made uh, <laughs> It made the lawyers look like rent, you know. So <laughs> I didn't even think most, only probably uh, an eighth of the people understood what was going on. Mm -hmm. Now, Kevin, while you're in Florida, you wrestled everybody from Dusty Rhodes to Andre the Giant. I'm um, just wondering, do you have any good Andre stories you can share? Yeah, uh, Andre and I were good friends. And uh, I actually brought him into uh, uh, I used to ride with Andre in the Florida. I used to get him a girlfriend every night. So <laughs> he, he liked me, so he he kept that thought, what I did for him, in his head for years. So when I wrestled him, when I was later on the hill, he really took care of me. He really took care of me. Tell him about the old lady in the audience. Oh, yeah. The only time I ever broke kayfabe was I was wrestling Andre, and I threw her on the floor. And I grabbed him and scratched his back and threw him in the post, but he hit the post. And the next thing I knew, he hit the post. And the next thing I know, I feel like a hot poker is on my back. Some lady with long fingernails, digs her fingernails on my back. It just about kills me. Uh, and I turned around and said to her, hey, don't worry. He's, he's 7'4". I'm 5'8". He, he's uh, 508 pounds. I'm 258. Uh, eventually, go win. Sit down and watch it. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Yeah, there's something about old ladies in pro wrestling because we've talked to a couple of guys that have been attacked by old women. And uh, I, Andrew, do you have an experience of being uh, attacked by an old woman at all? Oh God! Oh my God! Listen, it's a funny fucking story. So I'm wrestling Tommy Dreamer. I think it was up in in either Syracuse, Albany, or somewhere like that, or Buffalo. And me and Dreamer are fighting all over the building. And you know the way Dreamer always does that spot where he grabs a bottle of water from somebody, drinks and spits it in your face. Mm. Well, <laughs> it's going around. Nobody has water. And I'm selling it. He's bipping me, bipping me. And I'm all over the place selling. It's ramming my head in the guardrail. I couldn't take one more guardrail shot. We already <laughs> did all four sides of the fucking ring. And then he turns around and he grabs something from an old lady. 
And he spits it in my face. And I look at Tommy and I go, Tommy, really, Sprite? <laughs> my face was all sticky. This old lady got so pissed off. She was fucking swinging her fucking pocketbook at me. I said, he took the fucking drink, not me. <laughs> she was like, yeah, but you're the bad guy. <laughs> it makes sense, right? And then there's another broad, I gotta tell you, story from this weekend. So my fiance, Karen, is the lovely Miss Karen when I come out. And she stole a cane from the old lady in the front row and went to hit my opponent. My opponent grabbed the cane, pulled it out of her hand turned around, chased her around. When he turned around, I pulled a prosthetic leg off the guy next to the old lady and hit him in the face with the foot. Uh, wow. <laughs> hey, you want to hear something? You want to hear something? Me and Kevin got so much heat this past January, a year ago, almost a year ago. Kevin, tell him what we did to Flash Flanagan in, 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 in Illinois. What did we do to Flash Flanagan? The lighter fluid. Oh, I know. When I, I, thought, I thought it was, I didn't realize it. Why? Uh, I poured lighter fluid all over the guy and tried, and tried to light him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we the, the problem was we never smartened up the ref that we really weren't going to do it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So the ref grabbed the igniter out of, out of my hand. First, he grabbed it out of Kevin's hand. Then I had the second one. He pulls it out of my hand. He, and as I'm lighting it, flicking it, he pulls the rod up and he snaps it. And the flame from the butane goes up my hand. And I'm thinking to myself, it looks like it's going to fall right down onto flash. Thank God the flame dissipated like a like a flat like flash powder before it got to him, because he would have really got fucking burned. And that's because you didn't we didn't smarten up the rep, but we wanted to keep it. At, we wanted to keep everything, yeah, right? We wanted to surprise everybody, right? Yeah, yeah. No, we we shocked everybody. We got a shit ton of hate mail. Very often, surprising people with, with gimmicks like that just out of nowhere. Yeah, Kevin Kevin did that for years. Yeah. So what when uh when are we what are the dates and the buildings guys? Let's talk about that. I'm looking we're come we're going we're gonna be in Quebec and Toronto uh uh for a con and a wrestling show on uh March twenty first, twenty second, and twenty third. And then uh February twenty fourth, we are gonna be in uh Chicago, Illinois. I forgot the name of the company, Kevin, but uh we're gonna be in Chicago, Illinois. Um, actually, you know what? I, I think I do have my, my phone right here. Uh, we're going to be in Chicago, Illinois. Um, oh, we forgot the name of the company. What is it called? Uh, this is, this yeah, is good. This is great. Yeah, Just we're going to be in where we're gonna be. Chicago, February 24th. And, uh, and also we're going to be in, uh, January, January 10th. Oh, no, January twelfth and third, twelfth uh, and thirteenth, CCW uh, in uh, in Florida, in uh, Kissimmee and Pompano Beach, and then uh, January uh, February thirteenth, Championship Wrestling from Florida returns. No, uh, um, February tenth, Championship Wrestling from Florida returns in Pompano Good. Beach. Uh, Good. So you got a sorry. You guys got a, busy, a pretty busy calendar. Like uh, yeah. you're out here doing this, like if you know, at least every other weekend or so, right? Yeah. We, you know, Kevin's very. Kevin and I have both been trying to stay as busy as possible, right, Kev? Yeah, yep. We're out so. here three to four times a month, so you know, usually oh, every other weekend or every weekend, depending you know, the time of the season. So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, this Saturday, I'm in uh, December 16th. I'm in a uh, uh, show for e uh, ECPW uh, um, and Long Island and uh, Queens, New York. It's uh, the Queensboro El Elks Lodge where ECW used to run for years. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a show there. I think it's called Santa Slam. Do you know uh, who you're on working against? You know, oh, I'm working this big dude, man. Uh, he's they, he used to wrestle under the name 
building, like building, because he's so big and wide. Now he wrestles oh, yeah. as Legion. So now he wrestles as the name Legion. Uh, it's this match like 15, 20 years in the making. You know, he the kid always looked up to me, always liked me, always wanted to work with me. So finally, the promoter uh, put us together, and I'm. I got, you know, I get a lot of that lately, man. A lot of kids come up that really want to work me and stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, Kev, you know that, right? And yeah, you should set them all on fire, Andrew. Every yeah. last one of them, set them on fire. It sounds great. I can't wait to get up there. I, I love Canada. Nice. Yeah. yeah we, we, we love yeah. working up in, in Canada. And Ke Kevin lives in the Pacific Northwest. You know that, right? It, uh, he uh, Sullivan, I'd imagine, uh, originally is like a New England, uh, right? Uh, New England, uh, originally from yeah. Boston, Massachusetts, sort of thing. Yeah, but that's a long time ago. I yeah, left. well, we got Sullivans. My family is uh, is uh, Sullivan on on uh, Newfoundland, right? So, like yeah. everybody that's down in New England were people that started off where I'm from and and continued on to the states, like smart okay. people. Yeah. Good. That's why we're so, into Sailor White. That was good. So, Kevin, I'm going to go back to, uh, I want to talk about uh, your feud with Hulk Hogan for a second, if that's okay. Um, yeah. yeah, so you uh, you returned back to World Championship Wrestling, and uh, you formed a group, uh, the Faces of Fear, uh, Brutus Beefcake, uh, Earthquake, uh, were some of the people. Oh, that involved. was the Dungeon of Doom. That was the Dungeon of Doom. Were no, they, that was the faces of fear. That first. was the face yeah. of fear, Kev, first? Yeah. yeah. Um, what, whose idea was it to put together the faces of fear, and what was it like working with, with Hogan? Oh, Hogan was great. Uh, fungus, yeah. faces of fear were uh, the guys that had wrestled uh, Mo you know, Mosca, and he was in for a while, and Earthquake, and a bunch of guys that had dropped money with Hogan, so he tried it again, and he did it again. So from then on, it was a really, really cool deal to them, where the people hated him, so it was really cool. So you put together a stable of heels to go against Hogan to basically feed it to him, I guess, huh? and to make him look stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hogan's mustache has recently been voted the greatest of all time. Is yeah. shaving off Hulk Hogan's mustache the most dastardly thing a heel has ever done in the history of professional wrestling? Well, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> It was pretty uh, dastardly, but, you know, hey, people knock Hogan and all this, but, hey, without Hogan, Russell wouldn't be where it is today. 100%. I agree. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Um, y you would retire uh, not too long after the feud with, with Hogan, and you would focus more um, booking and writing the shows. How long after did you stick around in WCW uh, writing for them? Oh, about I was there five years altogether. Five years altogether. Okay. And what are uh, some of your favorite uh, angles that you booked? Oh, Hogan turned hill. Yeah. That was you? Yeah. Who else ah. was there? Holy shit, that's awesome. <laughs> My mind's blown right now. <laughs> Matter of fact, Hogan Hogan hid in his house when they were doing the angle for uh at, at the NWO, right, Kevin? Yeah, he lived a mile down the street from the ocean center. Yeah. Was the third member originally supposed to be Sting and then Hogan found no. out no. to be part of it? No? No. No, that's all bullshit. Wow. No. No, not even close. Wow, that's amazing. Good to know. Not even close. Kevin also uh, orchestrated the Bill Goldberg uh, uh, winning streak, right, Kev? Yeah, I had uh, 
Phil by himself for a while. And uh, nobody realizes, but I beat Phil the first night out. So it, things worked out. Yeah, things worked out. Yes, I'd say yeah. they did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what uh, do you what do you find more satisfying? Do you do you find uh, being in the ring and getting a pop out of the people, or do you, like or writing like a really good angle and um, having it like executed just the way you, you you picture? What what do you think is more satisfying? I think uh, watching an angle come together and be satisfied. Huh? So. Yeah. So, uh, Andrew, as you know, I got to go pick up Bianca. Yep. Uh, so, uh, guys, we'll see you soon. We're going to come back, back, right, guys? Absolutely. You guys Absolutely. are always welcome. Yes, thanks, Kevin. We're going to do a part two. We're going we're gonna to do a part two on this one, I hope. Yeah. A couple of weeks. With, yep, we'll with a better video back. feed. With a better video feed from Kevin. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Taskmaster. Yeah, it's been an yeah. honor having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, he had to pick up his his, his daughter Bianca. So nice. nice so nice, yeah. yeah. So I, I just want to get back just before we uh, go uh, with this uh, this Titan. Is it Titan that you're taking on this weekend? This Titan character, Andrew? No, uh, um, Legion. 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 Yes. Who's? It uh, looks like a cross between Cousin It and Abdullah the Butcher. Now, what uh, <laughs> what kind of a beatdown are you going to put on a guy that says? That you're, you know, one of his, uh, you know, he's been looking for a match for you. You're, you're one of his uh, wrestling heroes. Like, are you going to take it easy on this guy this weekend, or? Well, Patrick, I ain't going to fucking kiss him. Nice. <laughs> you know, beautiful. What's the worst injury that gonna... you've ever inflicted on someone? What happened? I couldn't hear. What's you. the worst injury that you've ever inflicted on someone? Oh, I, I pride myself on not hurting anybody. But a few guys, one one of the guys, uh, I hit him with a Samoan drop, and I, I think I landed on – sort of accidentally landed on his face. Um, and uh, uh, a buddy of mine, I got he, – he was a good friend of mine. I, I, it was a flub in the in the ring. Um, another time I, I took a – on me, I took a leg drop off the top rope with a chair over my face from Crowbar, and it bashed up my face. Uh pretty bad you know i mean so i got injured a lot you know but knock on wood nothing too serious you know torn acl repaired wrestled with the acl four months later as uh under as the mass superstar because new york and new, uh, new york state athletic commission and a couple other places wouldn't let me wrestle so they used to call me ama anderson uh against medical advice anderson oh nice that's awesome <laughs> that's an awesome I'd nickname I'd I wrestled with mask on as uh, Billy Eady gave me years ago. Dennis Carluzzo from the uh, uh, ran in the, with the National Wrestling Alliance. He ran part of the National Wrestling Alliance in the the early mid nineties. And uh, Dennis gave me Billy Eady's mask and told me to wrestle as a mask superstar. I remember being on a show and all of a sudden Billy's there as Demolition Axe. I'm like, Bill's gonna fucking kill me. And I want to wrestle Bill that night. We kayfabe the people. You know, wow. it was pretty fucking cool. <laughs> No, so occasionally I still put the mask on. I do the mask superstar and have fun. Bob Cook, a friend of mine from Florida, NWA guy, uh, WCW guy. He also uh, also wrestled as the mask superstar for quite a while. So you know, so that was another one of my my exploits. You know, it was yeah. extra money. You know, it was extra money, uh, extra match. You know, throw a few extra bucks in the envelope it was always great. You know, hit somebody with a swing and neck breaker. Nobody knows the difference <laughs> now. That now everybody knows the fucking difference. That's right. You're, yeah. That's awesome. There's so much to talk to uh, about you and your uh, and your career. I hope that we can uh, get into it again uh, another time. Absolutely, brother. You, you guys schedule it with me and Kevin. I'll make sure all the kinks get out of Kevin's uh, Kevin's uh, phone and everything like that. And uh, I guess he, he, he either did it on his laptop or might have done it from his phone. But yeah, we'll get everything settled out and we'll get us back on and we'll have fun doing it. 
Well, yeah, you know? there's so many. Yeah, there's so much more I want to ask you. And you know Kevin. what? I think I think it'll be. I think it'd be easier if I have you just directly message Kevin. I think because because I sent him the link. I think that's probably why he couldn't access it. Could be. Oh, it. Yeah. Welcome but I'm I'm on my I'm on my my fiance's phone because I couldn't access it on my phone either. But my fiance is a a therapist. She's a um um she's a, a trauma therapist, and she does a lot of Zoom meetings and Zoom yeah. calls constantly all day long. You know, so. I got. I'm proud of my girl. She put away Bill Cosby. Nice. Oh wow. Wow. Nice. That's that's amazing. Super. That's something else to get into. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good thing that she's a uh, 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 into dealing with trauma because this this Legion character is going to need somebody to deal with the trauma you're going to put them through this weekend. You know it, baby. You know. Yeah. I, I'm going to be All on right. that big. Like, like white on rice, like stink on shit. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> love it. Well, well, I think we've taken enough of your time tonight, but uh, thank you so yes. much again for joining us. It was awesome. It's a pleasure talking to you. And so I cannot wait for us to do part two. Um, Listen, so do it again. Well. Hopefully, hopefully we'll do something or run into you guys at WrestleCon in Philly, maybe, you know? There you go. Planting the seed. Out. <laughs> That's it, baby. I'm planting a seed, you guys. All right. Awesome. Take care. We'll be right? in touch, Andrew. Thank you so much again. And have a great evening, okay? All right, guys. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Cheers. You did it, Bishop. You did it. Uh, what a way to end the year and start the next one by reigning supreme, answering, uh, a- asking questions to a man who's been asked a million questions that he's never heard before. What an interview, what uh, research he did. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I- I'm impressed. I learned things I never thought I'd learn before. I always thought Sting was supposed to be the man, so I cannot wait to have them back on the show for part two of this interview that's going to happen in a few weeks. I'm going to dig all into the WCW bookings and the storylines that this man has done. I want to learn about the finger poke of doom. I want to learn more about the NWO, um, everything. All that is fascinating to me, and we're going to find out so much more in the new year. Plus, we have more interviews lined up with former WWE superstars, future Hall of Famers, so much on the horizon yes and those indie guys i mean i i uh, really enjoyed talking to uh, andrew anderson he's got so many stories too so i'm looking forward to chatting with him and chatting to people from coast to coast people wanting to get themselves out there we love talking to you it's been a great addition to the uh, latter half of uh, of the year uh Bishop, before you take us home, uh, one more time, I'm going to say, uh, like, subscribe, put on the notifications for YouTube, go to our website, sign up. You can still get yourself entered into the draw to get one of Aaron's belts right now. The good one, the, the old one, the one that means the most to him. That's still on the line at BWFpodcast.com. And of course, send us some money for the love of God. All that we do for you guys, Aaron. Thank you for a wonderful 2023. We're not quite at our one year anniversary yet, but it is a milestone. Thank you. Please take us home. Thank you, my friend G. Patrick Condon for this wonderful year. I could not have uh, thought of any other better way to spend it, you know, week to week than doing the show with you. This, as we all know, the show means a lot, not just to me, but to you as well. This is a great, um, great thing we have going here and i think we're just on the cusp of greatness when it comes to the btwf podcast 2023 is great 2024 is going to be better thank you very much audience btwf nation uh we couldn't do this without you happy new year